What's up guys? Hi and welcome to Uncle Scott's Pancast. <laughs> Hope you guys had a great holiday. I know I did. I got to see my parents for the first time in two years. Thanks to quarantines and pandemics and what have you, we haven't been able to get together. Got to get to see my mom and do some cooking with her in the kitchen. Or technically I kind of stood around while she did some cooking. Um, got her making some of that fried okra that I feature in some of the other videos. Going to do a video on that, getting my mom cooking fried okra. Also, did a lot of Black Friday shopping. If you hear reports of a YouTube host being found dead in Utah, that means my wife found the credit card bill. I ended up dropping about $1,000 on various cooking items. Uh, a lot of fodder for future videos. One of them I want to talk about though is Le Creuset, enamel cast iron Dutch oven. They had those at Costco. We're going to go through that deal. We're going to talk about some stoves. Uh, we're going to unbox in today's video this Fry Daddy. Not something I normally do, the Fry Daddies, but this one appears to have been run over by the delivery truck. So we're going to mainly see if that thing has been damaged or not. We've got some viewer feedback. We're going to talk about Rebolita, also some carbon steel and more. Let's get started. Okay, the first thing I want to talk about is Le Creuset cast iron enamel Dutch ovens. These are kind of the pinnacle of enamel cast iron. Most everybody dreams about owning one of these Le Creuset's. I saw them at Costco over the weekend. Now, sometimes I am loath to talk about deals at Costco because Costco kind of presents some of their merchandise as a treasure hunt. Um, if I find a screaming deal on something, it may be there one day and gone the next before I mention it in a video. However, this one was such a screaming deal, I'm going to break that rule and talk about it anyway. Costco had the seven and a quarter quart Le Creuset cast iron enamel Dutch ovens with the metal lid. I mean, excuse me, with the, um, of course, metal lid, but also with the metal knob. Sometimes you see them with plastic. They had those for $290. Just an absolutely screaming deal. I have not seen one of those for less than $400 before. Um, it wasn't at the top of my list, but the deal was so good that I just went ahead and bought one anyway. Um, Costco is great if they have exactly what you want. Where they're not great is if you want a wide variety, if you want a big selection. So they had the seven and a quart Le Creuset Dutch ovens in two different colors. And that was it. They didn't have the five and a half quart. They didn't have the bigger ones. They didn't have the whole selection of colors. So if they have what you want, it's fantastic. Just an absolutely screaming deal. If you're looking for a wide selection, sometimes they leave a little to be desired. Anyway, that deal is gone now, but sometimes they pop back in. You just have to check. But I thought $290 for a Le Creuset seven and a quarter quart, absolutely fantastic. And it turns out I checked other retailers and I've been looking to get some Stobe equipment, S-T-A-U-B. It looks like Staub, but it's kind of pronounced Stobe. Want to try one of their Dutch ovens. And it seems to be that the seven and a quarter quart cast iron enamel Dutch ovens, that's where the price battle was on Black Friday. So Costco had these, Le Creuset's for $2.90. A lot of the other retailers kind of matched that with deals on the stoves. Also $290 roughly for the seven and a quarter quart. And I ended up finding a deal on one at Saks Fifth Avenue. Now, normally I consider Saks to be kind of a top end, high end, high priced retailer. They had price matched on the Dutch ovens and they were offering a $50 gift card. So I actually ordered a Stobe cast iron Dutch oven from them. It has not come in yet. And I'm not going to unbox this one in the video today because I'm gonna wait for that Stobe and we'll do a future video on unboxing and comparing the Stobe and Le Creuset side by side. So still waiting for that to come in. Now, when you hear all this talk about supply chains, I do want to kind of address that just a little bit. I ordered another Stobe baking dish from William Sonoma, and I ordered that, I think, on November 28th. And I just got an update that that's not going to arrive until December 29th. And who knows if that'll even happen correctly. 
So if you haven't done your Christmas shopping, you definitely need to get on it. These supply chain issues, they are not kidding around about those. Ribolita, Ribolita, a delicious hearty Italian vegetable soup. We put up a recipe for Ribolita uh, a couple of years ago. And the other day on the Uncle Scott's Facebook page, a lady named Carrie Robottom from York, England, wrote in and said she had seen that recipe and inspired her to make some. She sent me a picture of the Ribolita she made. But I got to say, it's very nice. We've been through these pandemics and lockdowns. It's just been really nice to talk to you guys, people all around the world. We all like cooking and good food and cookware and stuff. Just absolutely a pleasure to talk to people from everywhere about cooking stuff. Anyway, she made some Ribolita that re-inspired me to make some. I got about halfway through it and realized I was using the wrong beans. I didn't have the right kind of cabbage. I didn't have the stale, crusty bread. So mine was not exactly Ribolita, but it was still a nice, hearty Italian soup. But while I was getting those beans ready to cook, they always say to sort and rinse and drain and clean those beans. It got me to thinking, have I ever found anything in those beans when I'm sorting them, the dried beans, other than beans? So I put up a poll and asked you guys. And I asked, when sorting through, prepping, rinsing dried beans, have you ever found anything besides a bean? Surprisingly to me, 43% of people say they have found something like a rock or a particle in those beans. Uh, 1J007 says beans have gotten cleaner these days, but a couple of years ago he would find rocks, sticks, and various debris. So definitely some organic soup there. But I've never found anything in there. I was thinking maybe, well, I'll just quit doing this, but if 43% of you guys have found particles or whatever in those beans, I guess I'm going to keep sorting my beans before I cook them. Another poll I had put up was on value versus higher end cookware. This all got started when talking about those all clad D3 versus copper core pans and whether it was worth the upgrade cost between the D3 and the copper core. Um, I asked, when it comes to buying cookware, are you more value oriented or upgrade slash high end oriented? And here it was kind of split and I'm gonna say I'm kind of on the fence here as well. 48% of you say you are more value oriented. You mainly go for performance for the money, but 49% say you're high end. You want the performance, but you do like to kind of upgrade. And I'm kind of the same way myself. It was almost evenly split on the poll. Sometimes I go value, performance for money, and sometimes I like the high end stuff. I don't know. Maybe that's the way most of us are in life. Pan length. Someone named Ames Lie wrote in asking about this Dubuye Mineral B Pro Pan and whether it will fit in a normal size oven. And I've gotten variations on that question about other pans as well. So let's take a look at those for just a minute. Now I cook using this big Ilve 48 inch range and oven combo here. And even though it's a big range, it has two ovens. So they're kind of split and the ovens are actually not all that big, even though the overall range is. So this is the 32 centimeter Dubuye Mineral B Pro with the helper handle. It is about 24, skosh over 24 inches tip to tail. And I've found that it will fit in this oven, even though the oven's a little bit smaller, it fits in the oven just fine. It's a little bit off center, but the door closes just fine. 12 and a half inch pan, 32 centimeter, where things start to get a little bit iffier is when you get with the, these pans with the longer, more upward sloping French handles. Now this one is also a Debouillet 12 and a half inch, 32 centimeter. It fits fine in this oven, but this is just about as big as you can go. When you get up to this monstrosity here is a 14 inch Moviel, but with the overall length of this thing at well over 26 inches, this one will not fit in the oven. So I can't get the door shut with this handle. It's just too long and it sticks up too much. And this thing is really just a huge pan. So with a 32 centimeter, 12 and a half inch or so pan, even with the longer French style handles, I think you're pretty much good to go with a normal size oven. 
If you get much bigger than that, you run the risk of a pan not fitting in the oven. Now, if you're sitting there wondering, well, why is it a big deal putting a pan in the oven? You're going to use the pan on the stovetop most of the time anyway. It comes into play with carbon steel if you need to season a pan in the oven. If you don't have a gas stovetop, if you have an electric flat top, you need to use the pan in the oven to get it seasoned. You run the risk of not being able to do that with the 14 inch and larger size pans. Okay, let's open this fry daddy. One reason I wanted to open this thing is I noticed when it came in, this was not inside any other packaging box. There's just a shipping label on the outside of this thing. They just slapped it right on the box. No packaging, no, no packaging material. And when it got here, the thing was darn near smashed. So let's see if cutting corners on shipping costs have led to a damaged product. You're not going to be saving any money on shipping if I have to send this thing back for a new one. So let's see. Lid. It does not appear to be damaged. So that is very fortunate because if they had saved 20 cents on packaging material, they were gonna to have to eat that if this thing was damaged and I had to send it back and get another one. So look for a mini review of the Fry Daddy deep fryer coming up soon. Okay, got lots of new products on the way, lots of new videos coming up soon. Look for that video of my mom cooking the fried okra sometime this week. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again next time on Uncle Scott's Cake.